Sometimes plan A doesn't work out. I want to be a fireman or I want to be a superhero. It turns into, I don't know what I want to be. That's when you need a good plan B. On this episode of What If, we're hanging out with Tyler Murphy. You know, when I was five, I wanted to be a soldier. That was it. You know, because growing up, I'd spent the summers with my grandparents and I'd sit at my grandpa's knee at night and I'd listen to him. You know, he'd tell me stories about everything, stories about growing up. But the ones I was really fascinated with are the ones when he was in the army. And, you know, the duty and the honor and the discipline and the fact that, you know, 70 years later, he's still connected to these people, uh, to people that are closer than any member of his family, you know, his brothers. And all those that I had always thought, you know, someday I'm going to defeat the Nazis. Under the impression that someday I was going to have that kind of war story. You know, I was going to sit down and tell my grandkids how just awesome I was. How I was going to be incredibly famous. They'd name a base after me, build a statue somewhere in the middle of Times Square, you know, block off streets. They'd have parades. Uh, about eight months in, uh, I'd injured my knee. Part of the one of the confidence courses, there's uh, there's a jump, uh, the victory, and it's about a hundred feet, and the rope broke. I tore the ACL, I tore my meniscus, and I cracked the patella. It was clear that you know they had to operate. Uh, and then after the operation, they go through and they do an evaluation. You know, is your scheduled rehab time less than the rest of your enlistment? Or is it more? You know, and if it's if your scheduled rehab time or your perceived functionality after is not optimal, then you're out. And I thought, well, that that ruins my plans. You can't name a base after me if I'm not in the army. You know, I ended up working a stream of really menial jobs. I'd worked at uh, some retail places. I'd worked in a photo lab. He struggled for a while. Um, and like he said, he was working, you know, entry-level service type jobs. Um, but most of us knew that he was capable of so much more. <laughs> I was like, if I can do it, you can do it. And you're too smart for this. Uh, school comes easy for you, so it shouldn't be that complicated. Guess what? I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of it. So that year after I filed our taxes, I completed his FAFSA and put in the application to the school. I wake up in the morning, you know, and the first person I get to interact with is my wife. And it's usually her grumbling and talking about how she don't want to get up. Uh, so I kiss her and get out of bed. And then I have uh, my son who's, he's just awesome. Uh, he's well behaved. He's, you know, motivated. He's compassionate. He's really everything that I kind of wish I could be. <laughs> His name's Sean. You know, he'll wake up and as soon as he sees me, he goes, Dad, good morning, hug. Of course, yes, I'd love one. Currently, I work at Jiffy Lube. I just work on cars all day. And during my downtime, um, when it's slow, I'm able to do some homework. I set up my chair, my laptop, and I just do homework, you know, during my downtime. So it allows me to accomplish what I need to at school, uh, while at the same time giving me, you know, fulfilling that desire to accomplish something physically. My family is a huge motivator in why I go to school. Um, you know, I look back at my family and my mom had dropped out of high school. And then in first grade, we'd had this conversation. I still remember it almost verbatim. It was, uh, Mom, I'm too smart for school. I don't want to go. I said, well, why do you think that? School's very important. Uh, I said, well, school's so important, how come you didn't finish? Um, and then she just got this, like, oh, crap look, you know, like, well, busted. So she made me a deal that she'd go back to school if I went to first grade. So she did. She went back to high school and she graduated and then she went on and got her AA. And I never want to have that kind of conversation with my son. I want him to know all the time that education is important. And it's not just formal schooling, but, you know, the broad picture of education, lifelong learning, always looking at something, questioning, why do I do this? You know, what's happening here? What's going on behind the scenes? How do we do this? You know, what makes this tick?
I love math because it's, it's structured. You know, in real life, there are some things you just can't count on. You know, what's true one day is gonna be different the next day. You know, it's, it's something I can always rely on to be true and to be accurate. So when everything is just messed up and the world is just falling apart and I don't know what's left and right and everything's messed up, you know, I can always have one thing in my life that I can count on uh, to be the same. You know, and that, you know, in order for me to really connect to the world, I, I need something that I can hold on to to be concrete. At first I thought, I'm just gonna go just to make my wife happy and then I'll enjoy the math classes and eventually I'll get to the point where I really care. You know, something when I can actually connect to the material. And connecting to the material is all I had thought about. I didn't think about the institution uh, or the people going there. I had no idea that CWI's you know, opportunities would expand and explode for me like they have. I've been the first student to do a lot of stuff here. You know, I've been the founder of multiple clubs, uh, the president of several others, a member of the Honor Society. I was taken to Philadelphia. Um, I got to present at a STEM conference. I've been the first student speaker at the CWI Foundation, uh, the first at the uh, CWI Board of Trustees, uh, as well as the only student speaker at a State of College address. So the opportunities that have expanded here have been just endless and phenomenal. And for any student who wants to, you can create your own. You know, we're the college of what if. You know, what if? That, what a huge question and what a tremendous opportunity to, to get in and find out what could plan B become. Sometimes we're, we're so set and so driven on one plan. You know, this is, this is what I want to do. This is my destiny. And we feel robbed when it's taken from us. You know, when that, when that plan A fails, it's, it's devastating. It, it hurts to the core of a person, you know, and we don't realize at the time that maybe that it's not supposed to be. You know, looking back, I am much, much better and much happier in school than I ever would have been in the service. I get to pursue things in areas that I never thought possible. I get, I've met people that I never would have met. You know, on the other side, you know, if I'd stayed in the army, I'd have done stuff and I'd have been around the world, but, but you can't dwell on what might have been in something that isn't. You have to look to what can be. A couple years ago, Tyler Murphy's plan A came crashing down. Lucky for him, plan B is even better. Look for more episodes at collegeofwhatif.com, presented by College of Western Idaho.